Welcome to The Heart of Health Live. There's a place for modern medicine in your life. Learn to use it correctly by getting your toughest questions answered on today's broadcast. Discover modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses. Lifestyle medicine opens the door to optimum health and healing. How you live and what you eat can profoundly affect mind and body. Learn simple solutions to complex problems. God provides the ultimate healing we all desire. He wants us healthy and happy. We just need to understand His plan for our lives and live accordingly. And now, live from Studio 1A in Chattanooga, Tennessee, here's your Heart of Health host, Dr. James Markham. Good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you're watching this program or what network you're on. We're just glad you joined us. This is a program you want to tune in on, invite your friends. We are going to be talking about teeth. And hopefully everyone has some teeth or use some device to chew. And if you look at our set today, we have a skeleton on our set. We have some teeth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Teeth, dental care, mouth care. So if you have a question, I want you to give us a call. Our phone number, let me throw that one out at the onset. 855-644-3278. We have operators, wonderful people standing by, Steve and Judy and Marion. Um, they're all back, and Christina, they're all back there waiting for your calls. Um, and hopefully some of you will just give it, we'll write it down, we'll answer it on air. That's always the quickest. But if you want to ask a question to our special guest, Dr. Philip Swords, you can do that as well. And we also want to remind you of um, our text. If you like to text, it's 423 834-7307 is our text number, and we want to hear from you. This is the only program I know that answers your questions live, and guess what? We don't sell a product. We're not trying to hawk any special procedures. We're just here to serve you and let you know that we care. We might not have the answers, but at least we'll listen to you. And if our callers call in um, and you ask for prayer, someone will actually pray for you. We want to encourage you to visit our website, that's heartwiseministries.org. On that, you'll find a host of many good things, including old programs. We also have a section where people pray for each other, and that, way, that helps people in their healing experience. After the break, Dr. Philip Swords is going to be with us. He's going to answer your questions. We got some off the website. So this is a, a program you can definitely sink your teeth into. So stay with us because you're watching The Heart of Health Live. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. The Heart of Health Live is brought to you by HeartWise Ministries. I'm Dr. James Markham and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment, and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. This year, it's estimated that 56 million people will die. Some from old age, some from disease, and still others from terrible tragedies. 
At HeartWise, we can't do anything about sudden death, but what we can give you is free medical information that will help you live a longer, more fulfilling life with less disease and illness. If you are interested, we would love to talk to you about our wonderful God whom we love and serve, who is with us even when we are going through heartache. If you have a medical question, or if you are just at the end of your rope, call us at 855-644-3278. At HeartWise, we believe in truth, love, and healing. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. If you've just joined us in Flipping Channels, we want you to stay here because we're going to be talking about oral health, your mouth, dentistry type questions. Um, we have Dr. Philip Swords with us. And Dr. Swords, thank you for being with us on the Heart of Health Live. Well, thank you for having me again, Jim. You know, tell me, what got you interested in doing this as a career? Well, I, I always liked working with small things when I was a kid. Okay. And I wanted to do something to help people. And so dentistry seemed like a real good combination of small things and helping people. Okay. How many times have you been bitten? Too many times? Um, you know, not as many as you think, but it's funny. I was actually bitten yesterday. Oh, wow. That's right. But have I'm you, okay. Have you, have you ever had, had, have you ever had stitches? No. Okay. No. Those little gloves will not stop a tooth, will they? <laughs> they will not. Okay. So to become a dentist, dentist, you have to go to college. That's correct. And then from there, you go to dental school. That's correct. Okay. And um, I know that when I went to medical school, the dental school students were taking a lot of the same courses we do. That's correct. For they your were, first two years, about the same we thing. We were all wondering why we took some That's of right. the things we did. And someone said, oh, it's a rite of passage. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I've learned more since I left school than I ever did more. And I don't know about you, but the more I learn, the less I know. <laughs> I'm in full agreement. <laughs> okay. So how long have you been in practice now? In, I know you practice outside of Atlanta. How long have you practiced there? 25 years. Okay. And the name of your practice? Coweta Dentistry Associates. Okay. Uh, the county we live in is Coweta County. Okay. And uh, so we have a few of us that work together, five of us. Okay. And uh, so we call ourselves Coweta Dentistry Associates. And you see patients every day? Every day. So you're more than qualified to answer questions. I, I do answer questions every day, so that's okay. true. Well, good. Well, first, before our callers come in, and our number is 855-644-3278, want you to call. Dr. Swords is going to give a great answer. A lot of people have questions about their teeth, and in the real dentist's office, you can't answer them because there's things in your mouth, so you can't really say much. That's right. You know, they get you, and then they put, do you still use laughing gas and stuff like that? Um, I don't use laughing gas too much, but uh, uh, we use it every once in a while. Yeah, and then you, you know, you get them all. You know how in the movies, they always make, you know, the, the dentist, you know they always make jokes about that kind of stuff. That's that right. That doesn't really go on, does it? No, well, hopefully not, not too much. Okay, well, anyway, um, the first question, question um, comes in our website. It says, is there a best toothpaste? I think that's a great question. All right. Well, I think there is a best, best toothpaste. Okay. Let's and hear it. the best toothpaste is the one you like the best. Okay. If you do not like the toothpaste you're using, you won't brush your teeth very long. Oh, well, good point. So what I believe is that you need a toothpaste that has fluoride in it because that's been proven okay. to prevent decay. And so you want, you want to fluoride toothpaste, but you want to pick the flavor. Okay. And, and so if you like Pepsodent, use Pepsodent. If you like Colgate, use Colgate. If you have tartar on your teeth, use tartar controlled toothpaste. If it makes your teeth sensitive, stop using it. Yeah. And another question came in, Dr. Swords, is what, how did people clean their teeth before toothpaste? Well, that's interesting. My yeah. grandfather uh, actually never owned a toothbrush. Really? And uh, he believed in black gum bushes and you would chew the end of it okay. and you would use that to brush your teeth and I will say he died with all of his teeth and he didn't have any decay. Wow. Wow. Now I, I've heard of baking soda. That's you know, a great thing. I, I've yes. heard of baking soda and things of that nature. How long, how long has toothbrushes been around? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't that. know either. I don't I mean, know. Because they've always been around since I, that's a pretty big toothbrush that is. there. That must be an animal sized. <laughs> Animal that's, size. that's an Alabama toothbrush used for uh, Big Al, the elephant there. That's Big, what it's Big called. Al, the elephant. Well, we have a call that's already come in from New York. Melva, you're on with Dr. Swords. Melva, your question, please. Uh, 
And you notice that they're getting like dark. Is that because of um, an infection? Is, is it your tooth? The tooth or the no, gum? The gum. The gum. The gum. The, ah. gum, the gum. Yes. Uh, sometimes that darkness can be caused by actually tartar that's underneath your gum. And uh, it, it can be caused by trauma to your tooth, which makes your tooth turn dark. But often it's just some tartar that's underneath your gum, so it looks, and it, and it would actually look black or very dark brown when you took it out. So if you go to the dentist and get them to take an x-ray of that tooth and see if you've got tartar on it, and then if they do, they'll take it off or treat the tooth. Okay. Oh, okay. So, and that, okay, another question about the gums. If you have like a gum disease, then uh, and they, they will cut away the gum, or how does that work to, to correct it? If you have gum disease, there's, there's uh, what that means is you've got bone loss where, where bone was around your tooth, now it's gone. So uh, in our practice, the way we would treat that is we would first clean it out, like we just discussed. We would, we, and we might have to give you some anesthesia so it didn't hurt. We would clean that out, and then we might use a product called Arrestin, which is a minocycling antibiotic that would kill the infection underneath your gum. And once you put it in there, it stays for 21 days, and it's killing the infection in there. That's how we would start. Oh, okay. All right, and thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so for that's your, so that's your Okay, thank you for your call. Um, another question is, this is an interesting question, is how often should I go to the dentist? Or should, you know, a right. lot of people don't even go. Is there any advantage? Well, the, with, what well? they've shown is, is that our bodies are made so that we have um, antibodies that go against the bacteria that are underneath our gum. Okay. But you have to actually clean and cause some, uh, I'll call it irritation, or you have to cause a signal to go okay. to your body to, to uh, send those antibodies towards those bacteria. Every time you have your teeth cleaned, the antibodies are going to kill your specific bacteria. And you know how important yeah, that is because your is. bacteria and my bacteria are different. And if we both take an antibiotic, it strips us of a lot of bacteria. Some of them good, some of them bad. But our specific antibodies are going just for that bacteria. So it's important that you get your teeth clean. It's probably one of the most important things to do. Probably need to do it two times a year. Okay. Um, and some people need it more often if they have a lot of bone loss like our our caller was just talking about. Okay, that's a very good point. And of course, if you have a problem, something hurts. Right. Now, what's the most common cause someone would just come in just for an appointment? A bad tooth, a hurting tooth? Why would people just come in off the road? Uh, usually, it's either a, a broken tooth okay. or a hurting tooth. Okay. And, and if you have a hurting tooth, a lot of times the nerve has been damaged in the tooth. Maybe it's because you broke it. Maybe it's because of decay. If, if the nerve is dead, then it will actually, um, heat will cause it to hurt, and you can swell. If the nerve is dying, then cold will bother, bother the tooth. And so, and sometimes you can have a, a tooth with two uh, canals in it or more, and one canal will be dying, and one will be dead, and so hot and cold will bother the tooth. Yeah, because now I've always, I don't really, so that's what, when it's talking about root canal? That's what, correct. What's that all about? Well, there's a canal in your tooth. Okay. And in that canal is where the nutrients right. come to the tooth and the nerve supply comes to the tooth. Okay. But if, if, the, um, if the blood supply becomes necrotic or it gets mm -hmm. infected, right. then what happens is, is it dies. Once it dies, the nerve starts dying because it doesn't receive nutrients. And so therefore, you, your, your, your tooth starts being cold sensitive or eventually it will die and be necrotic and it will be hot sensitive. Okay. I hear a lot of people getting root canals. Okay, well, listen, we have some more questions coming in after break. We want you to stay with us, and if you get a chance, visit our website. That's heartwiseministries.org, or you know what? We would love to have you as one of our Facebook friends. I'm Dr. Philip Swords, an expert on dentistry, is here with us today answering your questions. We're learning a lot, so stay with us. We're going to be coming back to Kentucky after break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment.
HeartWise Ministries would like to invite you to take a moment and connect with us and share your thoughts and comments. You can join the conversation on Facebook You can follow us on Twitter heartwiseministries.org will help you stay up to date with what's going on. And of course, you can always watch past shows on vimeo.com. The Ultimate Prescription by cardiologist Dr. James Markham is taking the nation by storm. People everywhere are learning what living a healthy life is all about. If you're happy living a drug-filled, pain-filled, mundane existence, this book is definitely not for you. In this book, Dr. Markham dives into modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses and explains how lifestyle choices can significantly impact your health. To get your copy, visit Barnes & Noble or shop online at Amazon.com. spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Medicines That Kill from cardiologist Dr. James Markham is now available. In his newest book, Dr. Markham explains why he believes that medications may very well be the number one cause of death in America. Medicines That Kill uncovers the hidden risks associated with modern pharmaceuticals and outlines the biblical plan for physical and spiritual health. To find out how to get your copy, visit our website at heartwiseministries.org or call us toll free at 855-644-3278. We've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. I'm going to really concentrate on smiling a lot, Dr. Swords, since we're talking about teeth and we want everyone to have happy teeth. Teeth are so important, you know, Dr. Swords, you, you, you got to chew up your food and, and it helps you talk, I guess, and it helps right. you do a lot, of, a lot of good things. So we want to keep those teeth healthy. Um, Vernice from Kentucky, you're on with Dr. Swords, Vernice. How about giving us a question this evening? Yes, is milk good for your teeth? I've heard two doctors say it's not because the calcium in your pro that's in the milk, the protein in it, take that and more besides. I lost my teeth. They rotted from the inside out. I drank enough milk if it was so, I think. Okay. I've had prettiest teeth there ever was. Okay, yes, ma'am. I ma want his input on it. Okay. And I'll well, listen on the my own. Well, you, you have a really good question. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, that uh, and, and I'm sure Dr. Markham knows a lot more about this than I do, honestly, with all the people that he sees, uh, about whether cow's milk is good for us or bad for us. And what I will tell you is what I know about teeth, uh, which is less than that, obviously. Um, what I know about teeth is that cow's milk has sugar in it. And so when you, when you have, when you're a child and you have cow's milk on your teeth in the evenings, it, it can cause your teeth actually to do exactly what yours have done, which is to um, decay. And a lot of times people will tell me they decay actually at the gum line and they feel like they, they decay from the inside out. Now, whether that's true or not, I'm not sure, but I, I follow, I hear what you're saying and, and uh, you're not, you're making sense. Um, so what they do say is that drinking milk as a child is good because it provides calcium to your body. Now, I, I'm not as, like I said, smart about that as other people. Um, so I'm not trying to say don't drink milk. Uh, but if, if you've got bad teeth, drinking milk is not going to make your teeth better. That's a great answer. Now, now she's lost her teeth now. What can she do at this point? 
Well, the most important thing is actually to get, if there are broken roots in her mouth still, to get those out because that's a source of infection. Right. And the way I always like to think about it when I talk to someone that has a broken tooth, if you had a sore on your arm and it never healed, you would go to the doctor and say, hey doc, something's wrong with my arm, I need to get this infection out. Right. Well, that's what a broken tooth in your mouth is. It's a source of infection. So you wanna get that out if you can get it out. Then to replace the teeth, there's lots of options. Um, first, the thing is, is that you're actually better off with no teeth and those roots out than what you've got right now. Second thing is, would be probably one step up would be dentures, and then the next step possibly would be implants. Okay, great. Well, Vernice, we hope you start feeling better, and thank you so much for your call. Our next caller we have here is um, Lonnie from California. Go ahead, Lonnie. You're on with Dr. Swords. Hi, yes. Uh, my question is... Um uh, to uh, what I should do concerning uh, what I'm dealing with right now. Um, <clears throat> I had an abscess tooth in my upper tooth on the right-hand side, top tooth, um, and it was it swelled my face up a little bit and because I knew it was abscess because I've been through that before. And I prayed about it, and because of the situation, I couldn't get to the dentist to get it taken care of. The swelling went down. Now, uh, lately, there's been, like, a, a problem with sinus problems lately. Um, now I'm having a, a, a really rancid smell that's coming from my sinus area, and I'm wondering if that is from the infected tooth, and the tooth is loose. Right. So I'm wondering what I should do if it's, if it's life-threatening, if I should have something done right away. Well, I would uh, say that if, if... To pull that tooth, it's a very complicated thing because it's up in the sinus area. Well, first of all, um, just removing a tooth up in the sinus area is not always really bad. I mean, I did one yesterday. I probably did five yesterday. So just because okay. it's near the sinus doesn't mean that you're, you're going to have a problem. Um, second of all, okay. if, especially an oral surgeon would have no trouble closing that, if there was a hole up into your sinus, closing that hole into your sinus. And, and no, that's not something that sounds wonderful to do, but it's a pretty routine thing for them to do, and they do it every day. The third thing, and probably the most important thing, is this smell that you're smelling is really serious. And you don't need to take it for granted, and yes, I do think that you need to go get something done. Uh, because if you if you're had a, a swelling in your face, and you have a swelling in your sinus, or this bad smell in your sinus, you don't want to end up with a brain abscess because that would be really serious. Several years ago, they had an incident that was actually broadcast across the whole nation about a young uh, boy that died of an abscess tooth, and the abscess went to his brain, and that's how he died. So I really urge you to go to an emergency room or go see a dentist tomorrow if possible. Yeah, and Lonnie, sometimes when these infections get to your blood, in your blood vessels, they can cause not only brain abscesses, but they can damage your heart valves. They can cause right. systemic infections. So, so I'm glad you called, and we're going to pray for you, but we hope you find some help Appreciate right that. away. So, so just okay, hang in yeah, there. I, yeah, and don't, I've you know, been spitting up a lot of phlegm, too. So. Yeah, well, this probably could all sort of correlate. So I would go get some help right away. And thank you so much for your call. Um, Janice um, from Oregon. Um, you're on with Dr. Swords, Janice. Go ahead. Uh, yes. What I would like to know is how does uh, sleep apnea affect the teeth, if in any way? Very good question. Uh, there are many new products that are coming out that are trying to, uh, from a dental standpoint, without using a CPAP machine, to actually try to help with sleep apnea and with snoring and those kinds of things. Um, there's really two things that I'll say about teeth. Uh, when you, when you uh, have sleep apnea, you usually snore and you're usually a mouth breather. And mouth breathing all night long will dry your teeth out. So if you have bad stuff on your teeth, like one of our callers earlier yeah. uh, that was talking about milk, if you drink milk and then you put on your CPAP machine or something worse, um, you know, uh, almost anything, ice cream, let's make it that, has more sugar in it, then that will dry your teeth out and you'll actually get more decay. Uh, so that's, that's one issue with your teeth. Um, also, uh, the, the sleep apnea in itself has its own health concerns 
beyond your teeth, which I'm, I'm not really that smart with. So I'll just say that. Yeah, well, that, that's a great question. And sleep apnea is a big problem. A lot of people right. have it. It's been estimated that 20 million people have sleep apnea, and it causes all sorts, all sorts of medical problems. So thank you for calling, um, Janice, and we hope you, you have a good night's sleep tonight. Okay. <laughs> Um, the next one, Anna from New York. You're on with Dr. Swords. Anna, we just got about a minute, so we might not get the answer. We might have to go to break. Go ahead, Anna. Uh, what I'm calling about is I have a broken off tooth in my mouth, and they told me for at the dentist I needed to go to an oil surgeon. Yes, ma'am. And, and the reason you probably need to do that is you've probably got some kind of complication where that tooth is to take it out, it may be more difficult, and you need someone that, that uh, does that every day, eight hours a day, versus all the other procedures that we do as dentists um, during the day. So I think that's good um, advice. And would I have to have, uh, would they have to put me to sleep because I have a pacemaker, plus I'm allergic to penicillin. No ma'am, not, not necessarily. Uh, they probably can use local anesthesia, and it will be simple for them more than likely. Okay, Anna, we hope that gets taken care of and you let us know how it goes. And we will be concerned about this and we'll put it to our prayer team that everything goes well. And I'm just glad you're concerned about it because that shows you're, you're, you're looking, you're asking questions about your health. Um, after the break, we have a, a question about a big word, Dr. Swords. It's called temporal mandibular joint problems. All right. We're going to yes, talk sir. about that after break. And yes, you're watching The Heart of Health, and yes, we are live. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. Meet Charlie. He's a normal guy with a big problem. You see, Charlie doesn't like to eat healthy foods, and now he's overweight and doesn't know what to do about it. Luckily for Charlie, he's found weight management by the book. Weight Management by the Book is a complete weight loss solution that includes 7 DVDs with 5 hours of lectures, a workbook with over 100 healthy recipes, and an exercise band so you can exercise at home. Dr. Charlene McCullough is a nutritionist, author, and speaker, and together she and Dr. James Markham talk about the practical ways you can manage your weight and do it the way God intended. As it turned out, it was the best decision Charlie could make because he was able to lose weight and feel great. So now that big problem Charlie had is no problem at all and has completely gone away. Don't you want to know how to manage your weight God's way? For a donation of any amount, we'll send you the complete weight management by the book set of DVDs, workbook, and exercise band. But hey, don't take our word for it. Here's what others have to say about our program. Weight management by the book was an answer from God. I love that this program focuses on relationships as well as diet and exercise. Thank you for giving me the hope to change and for doing it in a loving way. So what are you waiting for? Visit our website at heartwiseministries.org or call our telephone number 855-644-3278. I'd like to think that one day, when we get to heaven, we're going to see a list of people. People like Jared and Susan, who were introduced to Jesus because of something we said. Or maybe it was as simple as a passing smile. But these people will look into their past and be able to say, I'm here because of you. Recently, you may have heard that HeartWise Ministries has begun spreading the gospel to the young, the old, the sick and the healthy using this very television program, but we need your help. We want to take this type of medical programming to the non-believer and the person who has closed themselves off to traditional forms of outreach. If you believe as we do and want to support HeartWise so that together we can count more names on the tree of life, please consider donating today at heartwiseministries.org. That's heartwiseministries.org. We've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. We have so many questions coming in, we're going to have to just have Dr. Swords come back again. Now, Dr. Swords, I see you have someone's mouth there. Um, tell us about 
the teeth and what type of teeth are the most, is there any teeth that's more important and which ones are the molars? Well, your, your molars are your back teeth. On okay. the lower, they would be here. On the upper, they would be here. These are your bicuspids. Okay. Here are your cuspids or canines. And these are your incisors. Okay. Your incisors are meant for tearing and your molars are meant for grinding like a mortar and a pestle okay. as you see in, in that uh, drugstore commercial. Now, which teeth tend to have the most cavities? Your back teeth, okay. generally speaking, your molars. And uh, you get your first molar when you're six years old. And these grooves down in here are a place commonly where people will get decay. Uh -huh. And uh, we have things called sealants now that help prevent those. But uh, that's typically where you'll get the decay is inside of these teeth right here. Now, are those the teeth that's called your wisdom teeth? Your wisdom teeth are behind here. Okay. And we don't have them in this okay. model. Um, but they would be behind here and they are molars also. They don't come in until you're about 17 years old. Okay, I told my dentist I wanted to keep mine because I needed all the wisdom I could get. I understand. But he wanted to take them out. He said it was crowded things. Well, what we really get concerned about is it harbors bacteria. So if you can't clean them, they probably need to come out. You know, you know I have a question. Why do they call them the wisdom teeth? If you, I well, mean, it doesn't seem like they're too smart back there. You're supposed to be smart by the time you get them. So, <laughs> okay. uh, so it's an uh, aging thing. Here. Like this is your six-year molar, this is your 12-year molar, and okay. then there's your wisdom teeth. And then, I then guess. you've gotten smart. That's right. I see. Well, we have a great question here that's a big word, okay? It says, I recently went to my dentist because I had some migraines and he started helping with my, me with my temporal mandibular joint. Can you explain this to me? Yes, yes okay. I can. Okay, well good, well, let's talk about that. Well, uh, that's why I brought this skull today. Um, this is your temporalis muscle and the way I like to think about your temporalis muscle is take your hand and put it on your head and anywhere you can reach with your fingers can be your temporalis muscle. Okay. So that's your temporalis muscle. And this is your mandible right here. Your mandible has several muscles that actually work with it, and your lower jaw can move. It can translate and move in different directions. It can move up and down and left and right. So this is your temporomandibular joint. Okay. And when you have problems with it, it's called temporomandibular joint dysfunction. A lot of people just call it TMJ. That's what I'd call it. Right. And so... Um, we're having more and more issues with temporomandibular joint dysfunction, um, mainly because probably we have more stimuluses in our lives. Uh, we're awake more. Yeah. We're on more drugs. Uh, as an example, antidepressants have a clinching mechanism. Okay. So they, people are on more antidepressants, so therefore you have more clinching going on, so therefore you have more TMJ problems. And that's going to mess up the muscle? Is that what happens? Well, it's a spasm in your okay. muscle. Um, typically, what will happen is you'll have a spasm. Someone will come in and they'll say, a lot of times they think they have a toothache. And they'll, they'll point and they'll say, Doc, I, I have a toothache, and it's my upper tooth. And they'll point right here. Well, actually what it is, it's the master muscle. And so uh, you can palpate it here, and you can palpate it here, and, and they'll say, yeah, that hurts. Uh, what's interesting is, is that in most of these people, they also have trigger points that are triggered at the same time. Yes. Uh, so they have what they call myofacial pain, and that pain can ask, actually radiate to other places. So um, I'm going to come okay. show you a little bit on you. Okay, come on um, here. So some of the places you might could have it, um, you know, this is your sternocleidomascoid muscle right here. Okay. So you would compare, say, this side to this side. And, and on you, as we saw, show, saw earlier, this side's a little bit more tender on you. Right. You come back here to your trapezius muscles, and, and this muscle is a little bit more tender on you than this one is. You can come to the front of you, and, and it'll be your pec muscle okay. in here that'll be more tender on this side. Your bicep, your tricep, and even down in here where people talk about having tennis elbow. Yeah. And what we find a lot of times is, is that patients have more than one thing going on. They'll, they'll have been on a long trip, or they may have taken a fall, and they don't connect the, the temporomandibular joint problem with, with the other problems in their, in their body. And uh, that's not to say, let's say maybe 90% of it is a jaw problem, but 10% may be something else, a long car ride or something like that. So, so what, what can you dentists do to help this temporomandibular joint do better? 
Well, I think uh, first thing is is that your your um, bite a lot of times or your occlusion is affected by your posture. Okay. So you know if if your posture's poor and you're leaning forward, then your teeth hit in a certain place. So I'm going to ask you real quick: lean forward and tap your teeth. Got it. Then lean all the way back and tap your teeth. And then right. just come normal and tap your teeth. And you'll notice that your teeth hit in three different places. Right. Is that good? Um, it's just the way we are. It's the way okay. God made us. Okay. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with it. But if your posture gets poor and you're leaning this way, then what's going to happen is, is that you're actually going to start having different bite issues. Uh, there are things such as the sleep apnea that would be issues right. with that. Anything where you're... Uh, people are having a lot of a lot of um, problems sleeping nowadays. Well, if you don't sleep as long, uh, you know, and you don't rest as long, and your muscles are tired, so you have these issues, and and you kind of combine them all, and and you start having problems with your jaw. So what do we do in our office? In our office, we would give you some um, exercises to do that would stretch, say, these muscles here, stretch you out this way, okay. or we might do them. Uh, 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 one where we'd stretch your platysmus muscle up in here and your sternocleidomastoid by doing this. Um, we have other ones where you grab your elbow and pull. And all of these are, are trying to stretch and relieve some of these muscle issues that you got. You, you might need to go to the dentist and have a splint made. Um, and basically when you get into that kind of situation, what you're looking for is trying to uh, um, break the cycle that you're in. Okay. So that's the idea. Well, I'm sort of worried about my joint because I just took a big yawn and I heard <laughs> something pop back here. Is that normal? Um, that you're not supposed to do that. If you're okay. if you're if you're starting to get like that, instead of doing the ah, do an e. 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 So you wake up in the morning, you don't go ah, you go e. e. Okay. And 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 if you're having trouble with your jaw, you don't buy sandwiches that are hard. You buy sandwiches that are soft. Okay. Um, you don't buy big sandwiches. You buy smaller sandwiches, smaller, softer sandwiches. Okay, now, now, how does this all fit in with migraines? Some people are going to dentists to be treated for migraines. Well, uh, I, I don't really want to say that I understand migraines, and I'm okay. not sure anybody can yeah, completely very, understands very them. Tricky. What I want to say is, is that typically people that have migraines, a lot of them are triggered by temporomandibular joint dysfunction problems or okay. the muscle spasms right. associated with them. Right. So if we can, you know, it makes sense if we can make that part of the body good and it's contributing, maybe it can get it better. That's correct. Very, very interesting. Now I'm starting to pay more attention to my joints now, my trigger points. Um, Margaret, you're on with Dr. Swords. Go ahead, Margaret. Yes, I'm 86 and I broke the tooth off at the gum. My dentist won't be back till October, and I was fortunate to see my periodontist who uh, he put a temporary filling in this, and uh, apparently it had a root canal. My question is uh, do I have it capped off permanently, or if it's extracted? And I'm on Plavix because I've had a triple bypass. Right. Do I go off the the um, Plavix in order to have this tooth removed because it had a large filling. Okay, and, there's a lot of oh. questions there. So um, stay with us, Margaret. We're gonna answer that question after the break about your tooth and about Plavix. Um, so don't go away and you listen because we're gonna answer this. Dr. Sword's gonna be right back, but we have to take a little bit pause. Stay with us. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment.
body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. You've got questions. We've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. We have been talking to Margaret, who's, who's calling in from Canada, and she's had a problem with her tooth, and she's also on Plavix. So you address the tooth part, and then I'll address the Plavix part. All right. The, the first thing I would do in this situation, Margaret, is I would actually uh, call your cardiologist myself, or either uh, get one of the people in my office to call your cardiologist, and ask whether they should take you off the Plavix. Once that question would ask, was answered, we would use the protocol that the cardiologist gave us, and then we would just take your tooth out, and generally speaking, it's, it's not a big problem if, if you need to have it extracted. Oftentimes, when you have a tooth that's broken, they just put a post down into the broken tooth, and they put a new top on it, and they possibly crown the tooth, and you don't even lose the tooth, depending on which tooth it is. So when you say post it, you mean something that goes into the jawbone and then they build a tooth around it? Or? Well, it actually goes into that canal we okay. were talking about okay. earlier. Right. So it goes into the canal of the tooth where she's had I the root it. canal. I got it. And, and they make those a lot of times out of carbon fiber now, which is what they use on all the race cars. Okay. It's very strong and uh, it retains the, the uh, buildup on the tooth and then you put a crown around it to protect the root and the rest of the tooth. Okay. Now, as far as the Plavix goes, I'm usually... Margaret, if, unless they've had a stent recently, and it's usually pretty safe, usually when a dentist calls me, I say go ahead and stop the Plavix for three or four days before, and then when, when they think if the procedure's gone well afterwards, they can restart it once, once the dentist thinks that everything is healed up and is safe. But that is a great question, um, and I hope that you can get your tooth fixed pretty soon, because it sounds like it's causing you a lot of discomfort. So. So we will put you on our prayer list, Margaret, and thanks, thank you for, for, for calling this evening. Um, lots of questions. We have Rose from Tennessee on us, and Rose has called before, haven't you, Rose? We're glad you're with us. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, I have, what do they call that, a canine tooth. Um, I had an accident when I was a little kid, and my front teeth got knocked out, and when you said that you get your baby teeth in at six. I had all my adult teeth in by the time I was six years old. Now I understand why I have soft teeth. And, and the, um, the, what has happened is the gum line has receded on that one uh, canine tooth. And I brushed down and brushed down and I brushed my teeth several times a day. I can't get that gum to go down and it hurts all the time and my dentist said um what do you call uh maybe do a root canal and i said i can't do root canals i've had problems with the other canines it had ended up having to be pulled out because of a root canal and because what i have so many allergies and stuff and um what can i do to reverse that gum line to get it down so it doesn't hurt anymore well if you if you've got an infection um, there's really only two ways. If you've, got a, if you've got an abscess tooth, there's only two things you can do. It's either got to be extracted or it's got to have a root canal. And, and I, I hate to say that, that's the way I start off with a patient in our practice that has this problem As I say, you've got an abscess tooth, you've got two choices. It's either got to be extracted or it's got to have a root canal. And I try not to have any kind of judgment on whether they want to have the tooth out or whether they want to have a root canal. Um, I will say this, Remember, just because you had a problem with, with one root canal doesn't mean you're going to have right. a problem with every root canal. And, and I do have people that come in and say, Doc, I've, I've had a problem with every root canal. Well, I, I don't try to talk them into having another root canal. Uh, but just because you've had trouble with one doesn't mean you're going to have a trouble with all of them. 
And honestly, there's probably nothing else that can be done other than getting that out because that gum where you're seeing that's, that's uh, sensitive or inflamed is probably due to the infection in the tooth. Yeah. Okay, Rose, um, we hope your teeth work out there and thank you for calling again. We appreciate your call. I'm Cindy from California. Dr. Swords is ready to answer your question. Cindy, you with uh, yes, us? Thank you. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, I uh, was diagnosed with uh, osteochronosis of the right jaw joint. I had an MRI of the um, temp manipular joint, or I don't know how you say it, actually. All right, you're doing good. Uh, uh, but anyway, it said that the right side mandibular condyle is, irre is irregular in configuration, demonstrates abnormal signals, flattening is present. Um, they did the, the MRI actually with my mouth open and closed, and it was dislocated in both uh, positions. It said open mouth projection demonstrates um, of the mandibular condyle, however, they're both flat. The disc was flat, and they couldn't see the, um, the joint or the um, meniscus or whatever was in between. They didn't know if it was misplaced or just deteriorated. Um, you, so you, my question is, they've talked about a total jaw replacement. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, you know, what, what would transpire before it got to that extreme? Well, I guess, I guess the first thing is I'm pointing to the area or holding the area of where, where this would be. It would be this condyle right here on you that is flattened that you're having the problem with. And, um, and okay. God bless you for having this problem. It, it's a tough one. Um, you know, there's, there's um, not a whole lot of difference really in joint replacement of your knee and joint replacement of your mandible. Now, I, um, the only thing that's, that's tougher is, is that the jaw joint is probably a more complicated joint than the knee. So I'll, I'll say that. But there are a lot of just really talented oral surgeons that are doing this kind of surgery, and they've been doing it a long time, uh, just like they've been doing knee replacements for a long time, and they've been doing it very successfully. Uh, I'm aware of one of my patients that had this procedure done probably 25 years ago, and she's just doing terrific. So that's something very encouraging to tell you. Do you have to have pain before you would get it, or how, how long can you wait to put it off? Well, you know, that's probably something beyond, you know, a general right. dentist to say. Right. What you want to do is find an oral surgeon, oral surgeon that you've got faith in and that has probably done several of these, and, and, um, and, and that's the person you want to tell you whether, whether you want to have this done now or later. Yeah. That, that's what I would say. Well, Cindy, thank you for your call. Sounds like you have a really tough problem there, and we will put you on our prayer list. Um, James for Washington. Go ahead with your question, James. With your question, James. Yes, I'm watching your program on TMJ, and I've always had a problem uh, with sleeping on my ear. I always thought the pain was from sleeping on the ear, but I've decided it's a joint problem. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. the other complication that I have is that I'm constantly biting the inside of my cheeks. Uh, apparently the jaw seems to be moving sideways, and I'm reaching over there and grabbing that. And this happens probably three or four times every week. And uh, I'm wondering if that is caused by that joint. Well, it's interesting you say that. Um, James, how old are you? James, how old are you? I'm 82. Okay. Um, do you have more dryness in your mouth than you did, say, when you were 21? Say, when you were 21. It's terribly dry at night. In fact, I'm planning on seeing a doctor because I feel I may have some type of a yeast type infection. Okay. You should. You should go see your dentist and tell them that you think you have thrush. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, what you're talking about, a yeast infection, and they'll probably put you on uh, a nice statin rinse, and it will get rid of, of that yeast infection. Um, also, the dryness in your mouth, uh, they make uh, several products out there. Biotene has one. Uh, there's one that seems to be very popular called Oasis that is kind of hard to find. And most of these products are a glycerin type product, and they will make your mouth more slippery, and you'll be less likely to bite your lips. Okay. Glycerin, very, huh? Yes, very common problem. Okay, good. Well, James, thank you for your call. Um, we're going to break, but we want you to 
visit our website, heartwiseministries.org. We have one segment left, so we're going to be right back after this short break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. HeartWise Ministries would like to invite you to take a moment and connect with us and share your thoughts and comments. You can join the conversation on Facebook You can follow us on Twitter HeartWiseMinistries.org will help you stay up to date with what's going on And of course, you can always watch past shows on Vimeo.com. This year, it's estimated that 56 million people will die. Some from old age. Some from disease and still others from terrible tragedies. At HeartWise, we can't do anything about sudden death, but what we can give you is free medical information that will help you live a longer, more fulfilling life with less disease and illness. If you are interested, we would love to talk to you about our wonderful God whom we love and serve, who is with us even when we are going through heartache. If you have a medical question, or if you are just at the end of your rope, Call us at 855-644-3278. At HeartWise, we believe in truth, love, and healing. You've got questions. We've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Dr. Swords, I'm so glad you've joined us. And Dr. Swords is not getting paid tonight. He's volunteered his time. He drove up a long way from Atlanta to be with us. So we want to say thank you. Thank you, Jim. And if one person has that question, many people have that question. And thank you for your service to not only the, our listeners and our callers, but all those you serve in your practice. We're going to go through some one real fast questions here. Um, we have a, a question about fluoride effects. Does this fluoride affect cancer? And what are your thoughts on fluoride and attention deficit disorder? I'll tell you, I haven't read any research on this. Have you? I have not. I have not done that. But, but you know, fluoride does many good things for the teeth. Right. And I just haven't heard anything negative of this. This is a, an interesting question. It says, um, this person um, coughs up a white ball that comes from the throat and it smells. I think that's a good clue. Um, how do I prevent this from happening? And I guess the first thing is, what are some of the possibilities? What could this be? Well, they could have some kind of a sinus infection, mm -hmm. so it could be bacterial in nature, or it could be some kind of a yeast infection, or maybe a combination thereof. And, and so probably they need to get to see either an ENT or a dentist to find mm -hmm. out what's going on and save one of those white balls to show somebody. Yeah, and you know, I think that that, you know, the smell, we see that right. frequently with fungal infections. That's correct. You know, so that might be a clue. but. Have someone take a look at that because if it's a chronic fungus infection that's in a sinus, they might be able to help with that. That's right. may not be as, as difficult as it seems. Okay, we have um, a good question from Texas, and this, um, this person, unfortunately, has a son that has teeth deformity due to thumb sucking, okay? That's gone until he's eight years old. They've tried every different method. How can we get that fixed is the first question. So how can they get that fixed? Well, are they talking about how, how do they fix the thumb sucking problem? Or do they, I, I guess that the thumb sucking problem. I'm going to go to that and right. I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. First of all, 
um, the child has to want to quit. And it sounds great that we just go, hey, you just need to quit. But one of the things to do is look at the differences in the thumbs. And you'll find that the thumb they're sucking actually is smaller usually than the thumb they're not sucking. And you want to make sure that they understand that they're hurting the thumb, not just the teeth. Okay. And sometimes that's important to them. Um, and, and so I think that's the first thing. Also, the space between the teeth that was mentioned in it, yeah. um, that may actually be due to a muscle that is between your teeth, and so you have to clip that muscle so that the teeth can move back together. And um, so, and that usually involves an orthodontist and figuring out, um, you know, and I would suggest you go to an orthodontist now right. to start working with this. There are mechanisms they use to keep you from sucking your thumb, um, little uh, things that keep you from wanting to suck them, so those are good things also. So you like put something on your thumb that smells bad and... <laughs> no, 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 it's an appliance in your mouth that oh. won't let you suck your thumb. And it has like a little point on it. So it, it, you, you hit the point with your thumb and so then you, you, you stop doing it. Because a lot of times when you're doing this is at night. And so you go put your thumb in there. Well, if you've got a prong that you hit, then you'll, you'll pull it back out. Okay, so it sounds like they should see an orthodontist yes. sooner rather than later. Yes. Get maybe one of these appliances to help them stop sucking his thumb. Yes. Okay, that's great. And they can get it at drug stores? Or? No, no, they would go to the orthodontist. orthodontist. He would have it. And get a prescription for that. Well, we are all out of time, Dr. Swords, and we want to thank you for being with us. And, and if anyone has a question, you can go to our website. That's heartwiseministries.org. We want to encourage you to join us on Facebook. Be one of our Facebook friends. And we want to join us each week where we try to answer your questions. And we want to let people know that, that you know, that the, the path to health also involves a relationship with your Creator. Because God has given us our health. God has given us our vitality in our lives. And we want to keep that relationship strong. We want to wish everyone well. And especially thanks, Dr. Thoritz, for being with us. Until next time, I'm Dr. James Markin, wishing you the best of health. We'll just talk in a few minutes. Okay.